So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries More Than Conquerors program. We are delighted to have you with us. Honored, aren't we, darling? Absolutely. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. And those of you that are faithful to watch the program, those that even pray for us and, and our partners with us, we're just so grateful to we can serve you in this way and share with you the good news from the Word of God, things you might have not remembered in a while and things that are always needed to be re reminded about of who you are, because there's sure a lot of stuff out there that'll try to talk you out of who you are. Isn't that right? Every day. Every single Every day. day. Every that's, that's single only, day. That's the only move hell has is fear yeah. and doubt. That's try, right. Try to make you Boy, mis, that's right. Try to make that's you misthink right. or mis, mistalk or right. you know, get scared or, right. or hide or you know, be fearful or to think maybe this isn't true. What right. I wonder, I wonder. That's hell's only move. No, that's right. I, I think the thing, and I'll just say this, and then I want you to get to your point uh, on some things we were talking about in the prior program, but the thing that opened Dean's and my eyes about the the priority and how the devil comes to steal the word mm -hmm. was that parable that Jesus taught in Mark chapter 4. Sure. And we happened to be riding. We were working for Jerry and Se Carolyn Seville at the time, and we were riding in the back seat <laughs> of their station wagon and their little girls were in the back and we had left our boys with a family member to be cared for and we were on our way to Arkansas to preach for or Jerry, Jerry was going to preach for Charles Capps and on the way there we had uh, Jerry put in a cassette tape of um, Brother Copeland preaching on the sower sows the word the mm -hmm. word mm -hmm. and the, and that was how Jesus termed the Bible and in that parable, he called it the yes. sower sows the word. the word. And the first time I ever heard that, the lights came on as to why the devil tries to bring doubt and obstruction to everything that you are believing God for. Every time you get a little piece of meat from the word of God and step out to try to um, act on it, sure. the enemy is there to kill, steal, destroy, take everything from you. And Brother Copeland so aptly explained all of that to this Pentecostal mind, uh, driving in the car there, that it just forever changed my life. And Praise I'll never God. forget, by the time we got to Arkansas, I was having my own personal revival. I got it. I Dean got it all ahead of time, just was, you know, maybe months ahead of me in understanding. But at that point, I'm telling you, I got it. And I had never heard anybody teach it like that before. And Terry, that the word, that the, that, that when the, the word is like a seed and it gets sown in your heart and it's up to you, if you're going to let the rocks or the thorns choke it out, or if you're going to actually act on it, guard Absolutely. it, keep it and not let the, the cares of this world, deceitfulness or riches, lust for other things, persecution or affliction, get in there and stop you from acting on the word. And then Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how are you going to get all the others? If you don't get sure. this point, how are you going to get all the sure. others? So it's all about the word. It's, it's all about it's the all, word. It's all about seeds. Coming out of your mouth. It's Believe all about it in your seeds. Heart. It's, it's planting. It's seed time and harvest. God, yes. God said in Genesis 8, as long <laughs> as, as long time as remains, I mean, there will be seed time and harvest. If you ever, I've said this many times before, but if you ever want to psychoanalyze God, yes. you put him on a couch. I'm glad you're then, saying that. Then you always are going to have to, you have to understand one thing about him, that with him, everything is seed time and harvest. That's exactly right. That's, that's how exactly he thinks. Right. That's how he, that's how he built the system. Yes. And so, uh, so the devil knows that. Yes. And so here, so every time a seed's planted, here comes the locust. 
And right. here comes the caterpillar, and here comes the birds, and here comes everything right. to dig up the seed, dig yes, up the seed, dig up yes, the seed. Yes, yes, I mean, the Word of God. Get to where your mouth is comfortable. There's a great verse over in Proverbs that says, it says, if you'll stay in the Word of God, it says your mind will become uh, accustomed to believing it. In other words, your mm-hmm. mind and your heart mm-hmm. will become accustomed to believing it, and your lips will become accustomed to saying it, sure. Proverbs says. So I just, you know, once I figured out a few of those basic things, then that phrase, the word, literally opened up in the Bible to me to realize sure. that God's talking about what comes out of his mouth. Sure. He wants to come out of our mouth. Well, that's what I said on the program two or three weeks ago, uh, that if you don't if you don't think it, you won't say it. If you right. don't say it, you won't do it. Right. That all, you know, the right. leg bone's connected to the foot bone. It right. all, it's all runs together. Well, because Romans it's, based 10. On, it's based on laws. Believe in your heart. Let's get back to what mouth. we were talking about last the week. Word. We were talking about the, the legacy series. Yeah. And uh, we said in the legacy series, we're going to put together, and it'll be ready next month, uh, four messages that the Lord's given me over the years that I've preached right. all over the world. People's lives have been changed, miracles. That's and true. It, it's who do you say Jesus is. That's one of those That's great, right. marvelous, <laughs> wonderful sermons. And it's so simple. Oh, yeah. All my stuff's simple. Yes, you know, is. I'm a missionary. I have to make it simple. <laughs> That's right. And uh, and then and then uh, salvation is of the Lord, one wow. of those powerful revelations. And um, how to live stable and unstable times. And then what we were talking about last week and going to talk about today is uh, where the word of a king is, there the is word. power. Mm-hmm. That's there right. is power. And so, anyway, we need to uh, get on with that because our clock is my enemy. I've always said I only have two enemies, the clock and the calendar. They're both always marching, marching, marching. So so I was in Tepepulco, 1976, <laughs> 26 years old. Uh, I was in Tepepulco, Mexico, and I was preaching at this church. Wayne Myers had asked me to go or ordered me to go to this church and preach for two weeks. And so I was, when I got there, it was a disaster on Sunday. Uh, I preached this great message on Sunday night on where the word of a king is. There's power, right. Ecclesiastes 8, 4, right. and Job 22, 28, and the decree of thing, and it'll be established unto you. Right. And I told the people, you're kings and priests. God's already made you kings and priests. He's not going to one these days. But if you're born again, you're a king and a priest already. He hath right. made you past Absolutely. 10. Kings Absolutely. and priests. And last week I gave the scriptures for that. So if you didn't hear last mm-hmm. week's program, go back and pick it up. And, uh, and and all the scriptures are there to prove yes, the point. Yes. And I gave those people in that church uh, all the scriptures to prove the point. And Renee, they were just miserable. They just <laughs> sat there. Their body language, their heads were down, their hands imagine. were down. Nobody said amen. No, Nobody said praise the Lord. Church. It was miserable. And I preached and preached and preached. And finally, I finished the sermon and uh, called people up for prayer. And they came up for prayer and nothing happened. And I'm not used to nothing happened. I'm used to something happening. Right. And I was laying empty hands on empty heads and nothing. We got to the pastor's house. His wife was cooking supper for dinner for us. And I said, Pastor, what's wrong with your church? They're, they're messed up. What's going on? And he said, Brother, I'm really sorry. I should have canceled the meeting. The only reason I even had you is because Brother Wayne Myers told me to have right. you. And I said, well, that's the only reason I'm here because he told me to come preach. And uh, he said, I should have canceled the meeting. I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, well, we're like Detroit is in the States with this town and the next one over. We build automobiles and railway cars and things like that. We're an industrial town. And we make good money. And he said, and everybody in town is 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 employed by this big right. huge um, company making cars and stuff. And uh, he uh, I, he said, and they're closing down Wednesday morning at nine o'clock this well, week. Well, well, and uh, here it is Sunday night. And that he, is and, bad and, news. And he said it's going to affect the, the economy. It's bad. People are scared. People are upset. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what the future holds. Wow. He said even the president of Mexico has come up and made speeches and said the government will try to help you, but it's going to be really bad. The economy is going to be bad. And I said, well, is it a strike? Is it they're in negotiations? He said, no, no, they're done. They're done. They're closing down. He said, Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, said the corporate heads have come up, even from the United States, and uh, uh, they made the speeches and told everybody they're closing. Wednesday morning, padlock in the door, 9 o'clock. And he said, that's what's wrong with everybody. And so I said, okay. Well, Monday night, Renee, they all came back. I don't know why they came back, but 400 of them came back. And uh, they just sat there, just miserable the whole night. And, and I mean, through the song service, through everything, just miserable. So I got up and preached a great sermon, and they just, just sat there, just just like wow. this at a funeral, like they lost their best friend. And I just said, uh, I just stopped in the middle of my sermon. And I said, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Hello, everybody. Everybody. Hello. Look at look at me. Can I have your attention, please? And I look up here. And I said, uh, um, 
I said, I, I need to ask you a question, a personal question. And I said, uh, I need you to be honest with me and tell me the truth. I, I said, Pastor tells me that the Dina plant is closing down uh, day after tomorrow, Wednesday morning. This is Monday night. Wednesday morning, nine o'clock, the plant plant's closing. And I said, what I need to know from you is how many of you it would affect directly right. when they close, if they close. I said, either you work there, you, your husband works there, your brother works there, you, you, your son works there, you, you know, uh, no women would work there back in those days, right. but somebody in your family, if they lose their job, it directly affects you. How many of you? And almost everybody in church raised their hand. And I said, okay, that's all I need to know. I said, I preached to you last night a wonderful sermon, a wonderful word from heaven just for you. God gave it to me for you last night. And I said, uh, I, I told you that where the word of a king is, there's power. And that your kings and priests are your words with power. And I preached to you out of Job that if you decree a thing, it'll be established unto you. Oh, what and uh, so verse. what you decree is going to be established. And I said, I said, but I said, I'm also a king and a priest. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm a man of God. And I said, my words are with power. And what I decree will come to pass. I said, so I realized that, that the president of Mexico, the president of the whole nation, says the plant's closing. And I realized the, the plant says it's closing. The corporate heads say it's closing, both national and international. And I said, but I'm telling you this. I decree to you as a man of God, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. in the office of apostle that God's called me to, that plant will not close down Wednesday morning nor thereafter. And if it does, you can tell everybody in these two cities, Tepepulto, Ciudad Sagun, that the God of Terry Mize is a liar. And I said, if it closes down, I'm a false well, prophet. I'm not a man of God. You don't ever have to listen to me again. In fact, if it closes down Wednesday morning, I'll pack my bags Wednesday afternoon and leave town. There's no reason for me to stay here. And there's no reason for you to listen to me anymore because right. I'm a false prophet. I'm not a man of God. I said, but I'm not packing. I'm not leaving. I'm going to be right here Wednesday night and we're going to have church. Wow. Well, they just sit there. they just miserable. Nobody said, amen, praise the Lord. Yay, right. nothing. And so I preached my sermon, finished my sermon, called folks up for prayer, laid empty hands on empty heads, and nothing happened. Tuesday night, I do not know why, but they came back, all 400 <laughs> of them. And I preached my sermon, and they sat there like this, just miserable. Not a hallelujah, nothing. I mean, so I stopped right in the middle of my sermon. I said, excuse me, everybody look up here. Can I have your attention, please? I said, I told you last <laughs> night, but I need to repeat this tonight. And I said, uh, I, I know that the president says it's closing. The plant says it's closing. You say it's closing. Everybody says it's closing. I said, but the word of a king is with power. And hallelujah. decree a thing, and it'll be established unto you. And I'm a king and the priest, my words are with power, and I'm going to decree. And I said, I decree to you in the name of Jesus, as I told you last night, that plant will Hallelujah. not close down tomorrow morning, Thank you, Lord. nor thereafter. And I decree words. it in the office of the apostle that God's called me to. And if that if that doesn't happen, if they close, then I'm not a man of God. I'm a false prophet. And uh, the God of, you can tell everybody in these two towns, the God of Terry Mize is a liar, and I'll pack my bags and be gone. But I said, I'm going to be here right here tomorrow night, and wow. we don't have church. They they just sat there. My goodness. Darling. They just awesome. sat there miserable. And I preached my sermon, called folks up for prayer, laid empty hands on empty heads, and nothing happened. We went home. But you know what? Wednesday morning, yes, the plant didn't close. <laughs> and I tell you what, Wednesday night, we had us some church. I bet so. Big time church. There wasn't just 400. I mean, that thing was jam crammed packed people sitting in every pew people sitting in the aisles in the floor people sitting around around the walls people uh people sitting all up front uh in, where the altar was uh the doors the windows were open people standing outside 10 and 12 deep looking in uh, to see what the lord had done and wow. i tell you renee wow. we had wow. miracles and miracles and miracles during that two-week period yes, in fact i in fact i went and I, I just said well let's just have morning meetings now the ladies and those of you who are not at work i just come on in for morning meetings i'll teach faith in the morning and we'll have evangelistic crusades at night with miracles and, and salvations and uh uh, and during those two weeks, we had six children that were deaf and mute, Renee, deaf and mute, totally healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. We had a little girl that died during the week. We raised her from the dead. My we had goodness. a little girl that was uh, the pastor's niece 
uh, had, had had epileptic seizures all of her life. My, and my. they brought her to me during the day, and I cast the devil out of her. Now, not all, not all epilepsy is a demon spirit, but right. that one was. In fact, fact, that demon spoke out of her to me and said some things that wasn't her as a demon. And I cast that devil out. And uh, that girl never had another seizure the rest of her life. In fact, I saw her, I saw her grandmother decades later, and I right. said, "How's your, how's your little granddaughter? Did she ever have another? Se- our niece? Uh, did she ever have another? She said she never had another seizure the, you know, to, to this day. You know, it's twenty wow. some odd years later." And uh, we had miracles. We had a guy that had a stroke that drugged one side of his body. When he walked, he'd just drag and have his arm and hang and his leg. And God healed him. Wow. Had a lady that had a huge gorder, bigger than my fist, right in the center of her chest. And I reached up and cursed that thing one night in the prayer line, and, and it fell off. And wow. I mean, we had miracles and I would miracles say so. and That's miracles wonderful. and miracles. And my, my. Uh, the pastor you, himself, uh, before I got there, Pastor Josue, uh, which means Joshua, Pastor Josue uh, had had surgery and he had a plastic bag hanging on his side and tubes coming out of his body into the plastic bag. My goodness. That the doctor said he had to wear the rest of his life. And um, my, they my told goodness. him you can only eat uh, mashed up pureed vegetables like baby food the rest of your life with no season of any kind. You know, that's practically a death sentence for a Mexican. Right. I mean, I mean, no, no, no salsa, ni picante, ni pimienta, ni nada de eso. And uh, he, he, he just had, and I watched his wife prepare it every day for yeah. him. She'd fix me a regular meal and she'd fix him that mashed up, you know, and, and back in those days, there weren't any food processors. No, so right. she had that mortar and pestle, you know, and she'd, yeah. she'd, you know, that old stone bowl with a stone, you know, and she'd grind that, wow. you know, mash that stuff up until it's just mush, just baby food. Right, right. And that's what he ate every day, three meals a day is what he ate and was, and, and was destined to eat that the rest of his life. My and uh, one night during those two weeks, I was preaching and the Holy Ghost was moving. And I turned around to him and I said, Pastor, you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. You go out and eat anything you want. And he went out that night and ate barbecued goat. And I tell you, he was completely healed from, from that day to the rest of his life. He yes, was healed. yes, yes. I mean, God did miracle and miracle and miracle and miracle. What and great miracle. testimony. And uh, finally, I left there after two weeks, after right. all those wonderful salvations, wonderful healings, wonderful miracles, wonderful things that God did. And I left there, and I was driving back to Mexico City. And as I was driving back, I was praying. And I said to the Lord, I said, Father, I said, there's something that, that, that's bothering me. I said, uh, two weeks ago, I said, I heard myself say that that plant will not close on Wednesday morning, nor thereafter. And I said, I'm not sure what that means. And I said, that, that plant... If it closes in a month or two months or six months, I said, those people are going to feel like it wasn't a miracle, and I'm going to feel like it wasn't a miracle. Right. And I said, so, but I want to be fair. You know, I said, I want it to be long enough that everybody knows it's a miracle, but I said, I don't really know, you know, exactly what that means. And so I just praying about it and praying about it. And and so finally, I just just agreed with the Lord and said, I tell you what, I'm going to put my faith on 10 years. I said, if it stays open 10 years, there's just no way anybody could say Terry. that's not a miracle. Yeah. I mean, any business to last 10 years, you know, it's pretty good. Right. And uh, and so uh, I just locked my faith on that. And so I drove back to Mexico City, and I was happy with that. And that was 1976. So every year, I checked on it for 10 years, all the way to 1986. And it was still open, still open. Well, I quit checking on it after that. But you know what? This this is 2021, Twice. and it's still open. <laughs> Still open today. Thank you, and Jesus. I have I have friends in Mexico City that are salesmen. Yes, I was with you. And you on were one. with me on one That's of them. Right. Came up and said, "Brother Terry, said, you remember that that plant in Tepepulco that you declared wouldn't close yeah, down?" I said, fun. "I said, yeah." He said, "Well, I, I sell to them. They're, they're one of my customers." Right. And he said, "That plant's still open, never has closed." Right. And he said, "And they tell the story all over town. That everybody in town knows the story. So they don't know your name. They don't know who you are. They just say this gringo missionary, uh, <laughs> you know, came from the states and they got up and declared that the plant will not close in the name of Jesus, or he's not a man of God if it does. And uh, and so they tell that story. Know it's a miracle. That's right. And so uh, you know, that's just a wonderful." marvelous, tremendous well, it really miracle is. of God. But we need to understand, and those people got to understand that if you're saved, if you're born again, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're um, well, you don't even have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're born again, then God says you're a king yes. and a priest unto God. 
And uh, we need to understand that. And as in that office, we need to understand that where the word of a king is, there's right, power. Right. And decree a thing, and it'll be established unto you. You know, most everybody sitting here listening to me today knows my hitchhiker story. Right. Where I was driving through Mexico, and I picked up a hitchhiker, and he grabbed, took a pistol out from under his coat and stuck it in my ribs and caught the hammer and screamed at me and grabbed my collar. And he said, I'm going to kill you. Same thing. I begin to declare where the word of a king is, there's power. Mm -hmm. Decree a thing, and it'll be established unto you. And I said to him, well, I'm a man of God and I've got authority over you in the name of Jesus. You can't kill me. Well, that made him mad. Yeah, so and uh, he said again, I'm going to kill you. And I said, no, I said, I'm a man of God. I've got authority over you in the name of Jesus. You can't well, kill me. And, uh, and we went on down the road like this for a while. And finally, he was so angry, so mad that he just uh, said, get out of the car, stop the car. So I stopped the car at the side of the road in the Gornville. And he said, get out. So I got out on my side. He got out on his side. And we came around the front. And he, and he, you know, said, give me your money, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he walked up close to me. And I just stuck my finger in his face. And I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when I did, he hit me with that gun barrel. I mean, he popped me with it like that hard and knocked me back over my car. I was laying on the hood of the car. And he put the gun barrel right between my eyes and screaming at me and said, shut up. He's in his left hand like this up and down, had the gun in my head. And he said, shut up. If you say one more word, I'll kill you. And I pushed myself up off the car and stuck my finger back in his face. And I passed his gun like this. And I said, I said, because you're saying things, you're decreeing things, yes, you're yes. you're declaring things. You're you're a king and a That's priest, right. and, and 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 your words with power, and you decree a thing, it'll be established. Right. You. I, said, I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You can't kill me, and you can't hurt me in any way. When I said that, he just jumped backwards a couple of steps. We're talking maybe five or six feet. Just just backed up, lowered the gun, and shot at me five times at point blank range, and the bullets didn't hit me. Well, that that's just another testimony to Gosh. the fact that you're you're a king and a priest and your words are with power and you decree a thing, it'll be established unto you. Uh, most people know the story when Jackie and I started to get married and she said to me in tears, I don't know if you want to marry me or not. I can't have children uh, and I'll never be able to give you children if you marry me. Plus, I'll be an invalid by the time I'm 30 years old. And I said, Jackie, who said that to you? Those are that's lies. Right. Who said that? Well, and she said, right. well, the doctors told me and everybody else told me. And I said, well, I said, I'm telling you, God said you can have children. And I gave her scriptures out of the word of God. I said, God said he ordered them in the Garden of Eden. He said, multiply right. and be fruitful. He said in Psalms 113, verse 9, uh, that he'd make the barren woman to keep house and make her a joyful mother of children. He said in Psalms 127, uh, verse 3, children are the heritage of the Lord, yes, the fruit are. of the wombs, his reward. Uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 7, 13 says that there'll be neither male nor female barren among you. Psalms 128, thank verse you, 3, uh, my wife's a fruitful vine by the sides of my house. My children is all the trees you, round Jesus. about my table. Right. I I said, you marry me, you have all the kids you want, not because of me, but because God said it. That's right. I'm decreeing and declaring what God's yeah. already decreed and declared. That's right. And of course, we had four children. And I said, and you'll never be an invalid, never be in a wheelchair. And we had four children. And, and uh, of course, and she wrote that wonderful book, Supernatural Childbirth, and, yes. and still blessing people around the world with it today. And she's never an invalid, never in a wheelchair. And just, just, just all those miracles and miracles and testimonies and testimonies. Uh, you know, I was in, I was in, uh, in Haiti back in back in 03 and uh, President Aristide had uh, uh, invited 200 witch doctors and voodoo priests from different African nations to come to Haiti the end of 03 in December and to have a big uh, uh, celebration on January the 1st of 04 2004 uh, to rededicate the nation to the devil and to consecrate it to the devil as they had in 1804 and 1904. Now they were going to do it in 2004. Every 100 years was the plan. And, and I went over there in the summer and I told those pastors, I said, I decree to you as a man of God in the name of Jesus and the office of the apostle that God's called me to, that that ceremony will not take place January the 1st. And President Aristide will be out of this country, out of his office and out of this country in the name of Jesus. And that doesn't happen. I'm not a man of God. And you don't ever have to listen to me again. Well, those pastors looked at me and rolled their eyes back in their head and thought, well, who's, who's he think he is? Right. But come January, come January, right. I started getting emails from Haitian pastors saying, Dr. Myers, Brother Terry, it didn't happen. They, they canceled the ceremony. It didn't, it didn't happen. The, but they you, didn't Jesus. dedicate the nation to the devil. My, and, then, my, my. and then in February, every news, every news outlet in the world picked up the story that President Aristide fled his office. And then nobody knew why. Nobody knew why. You can Google it today. They don't know why. Fled his office and fled the nation and just disappeared. While well, he was president, he just left. 
and uh, didn't come back for 10 years. And in 10 years, he came back for two-week vacation and then went back home again. Then he's been back one time since then and went right back again. But though that's decree a thing, and it shall be established sure unto is. you. It's uh, the word of a what king is with power. And, of course, I could tell miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. But this is all going to be in that legacy series, those four right. sermons I that's talked right. about. Uh, and it should be ready next month uh, th- that you can get a hold of these these four great marvelous sermons that God gave me uh, for specific things and specific times right. that'll work. that's worked for so many people and that will work in your life as well uh, if you get a hold of it and put it, put it to work. Well, that, having confidence, not only just in the Word of God, but the word of God that we speak, like the scripture that says, this is the confidence we have in him. Yes, that if we, we ask, ask anything, anything according to his will, we know he hears us. First John five. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have we the petition have, we desire we of know. him. Then, and that's the spirit of the word of God is that, you know, and you have confidence and you, you not only just believe God said it, but you have confidence when you repeat it and yes. say it, what he says yes. on that thing. And so it's it's just so important for us to know that. Like uh, Hebrews 4, 12 over there, it, it says that the word of God, I think the Amplified reads it this way. It says the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Amen. And it will divide asunder even mm. the soul from the spirit and the joints from the marrow. And so when we think about how powerful the Word of God is, Terry, and then you put it in in the mouth of a believer (laughs) that has, has prayed in tongues, knows what the Word of God says and believes it, then that same kind of power comes out of their mouth. The word of the king is with power. And so when when a king speaks, there's there's everything in the kingdom of God that he has available as his resources to behind him. Absolutely. He has all the troops. He has goes back to spiritual. Yeah, it goes back to spiritual authority. He has all the finances. He has he has everything and every asset that he could possibly have at his uh, disposal. And that's what the Lord wants us to see is that he has all of his kingdom behind us that we can say mm-hmm. what he says and we can have what he has. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, it's just it's just startling. And when I learned that as a young mother <laughs> with two little two little boys that needed healing in their bodies. I've, you know, I just spent all my time trying to get into the Word of God. Every time they took Amen. a nap, I was in the Word. Amen. And I had to know that because I had to keep my babies healed. Well, our time has gone for today. How did you do One that? more time. <laughs> and uh, we are just thrilled and honored, as always, to minister to you. And we just want to remind you one more time that under any circumstances and all situations, you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye-bye. Terry's stories about being ended up here in Mexico being shot at by robbers. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. 